from Millville, New Jersey, and reaching around the world. New Life World Outreach Ministries presents His Word of Power with Pastor Richard F. Myers. Join us in a time of joyful worship, anointed ministry, and dynamic preaching from one of our Sunday morning worship services. It happens here on His Word of Power. This is my season 
to walk in your victory. All my mountains you lay low, and this is my season for all that you promised me. My God, I will not let you go. 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 Amen. Come on, let's just hunger and thirst for the Lord. Let's lift up our hands. Jesus, we come to worship you. We've come, Lord God. We hunger and thirst for your presence. Amen. Yeah, hunger and thirst for your presence. You are the living God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, let me hear your voices go up. You don't have to do anything complicated or anything. Just say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I've come to worship you. I've come to give you all glory, give you all worship. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Church in Millville, New Jersey, presents The Joy of Christmas, a musical celebration of the birth of Christ. Join us as carolers sing Christmas favorites in our town square. You'll enjoy soloists, choirs, and period actresses and actors. There's two performances, Friday, December 9th at 7 p.m. and Sunday, December 11th at 11 a.m. It's the celebration of the birth of Jesus. Mom, Mom, New Life Church is having our trim the tree tonight. Can we go? I think we might be able to go. But Mom, all my friends will be there. You know, our friends are going to be there too. We'll go. Let's find our family ornament to hang on the tree. You're invited to join our families and hang your family ornament on our giant tree. It happens Sunday, December 4th at 6 p.m. Let's just pray. Father, I thank you and I praise you for you are great. You are greatly to be praised. And we magnify and exalt your holy name. Let your will be done as it, on earth as it is in heaven. And let us bring glory unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. Zechariah chapter 4 very familiar portion of scripture. Very familiar portion of scripture. It says, verse 6,
This is the word of the Lord to Jerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. I don't know if you realize it or not that we really need the Holy Spirit. He said, well, the Bible says, without him, you can't do nothing. And I come to the realization that I, I can't do nothing without the power of the Holy Spirit. No matter how much I want to, no matter how much I decide I'm going to do it, without his power, I can't do it. I make promises, Lord, just give me another chance. Lord, if you just try me one more time. Lord, if you just do this, and every time I make them promises, I fail because he wants me to realize it is not by my might, nor by my power, but by his spirit. If I was sing, if I were to sing today, which I'm not, we used to sing a song that says, if it, if, if, if we used to sing a song that says, Jesus, I am thirsty. Won't you come and fill me? Earthly things have left me dry. Only you can satisfy. All I want is more of you. And as I, as I listen to those voices, of the, the hymn of the song, all I want is more of you because, I, you, you know, at 66, you experience some stuff. You see some stuff, and, and, you, and, you, and you say, well, what left? What is left in the natural? In the spiritual, you say, I want more. I want more. Pastor Ma was up here Sunday before last, and he said, I'm jealous of those who on the other side that we see God moving. Where is God in Millville? I mean, he's moving in our church, but what about the other churches? I want more. I want more of the power of God to move in our midst. I want more of the power of God to break the yokes of bondage. I want more of the power of God to take our kids off of drugs and take our, off of alcohol and all these other things that they're involved with. I want the church to stand up and be a light unto the city. The Bible says we are the light. We are the salt. Why are we lighting up the city? We're agreeing with everybody else. Yes, homosexuality is all right. There's more than two genders. That's a lie. I was doing a survey. It says male, female, what else? I cut the survey off. What do you mean what else? There's only two. God made them male and female. I don't care if you want to be a it or this. You, you, God said you're either male or female. And there's no change in the word of God. But see, the church, we just, we just gone along with the crowd, just doing everything with the crowd. And, and you know, and the Bible, Jesus said that the, it's a great highway to hell. He said it's a highway to hell, but it's a narrow way to get to heaven. And he said, I'm not saying it. He said, few there be that enter the end. That's why the scripture says, not everybody that say, Lord, Lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Not everybody says that I'm, I'm going to follow Jesus. All you have to do is look at their fruit. I'm not judging. I'm a fruit inspector. Because we have to understand that, that Christians ought to be different from the world. We ought to live different. We ought to think different. We ought to, we ought to respect each other differently because we are different. People, people ask me, will you go to that white church? I said, what white church? Man, we got all kinds of colors in here. Red or yellow, black and white. See, until the church get out of the practice and stuff, the world is going to stay there. Until we get out of the stuff. I can't touch her. I can't talk to her. Why? Because she white. She's a sister. See, we belong to a family of God. The God said, I don't judge you by your color of your skin. And I'm sick and tired of this prejudice, racial, all this other mess in the church. And it's not only in the church, church, the Baptists can't 
get with the Methodists and we can't get along with each other, but we all supposed to be serving the same God. Now, if we're all saving, serving the same God, why can't we worship together in the same house to the same God? I don't know where all this comes from. It ain't in my notes. See, it's time, it's time, it's time we, we, we as God's people come together and be as God's people. Because the love of God is only going to be expressed through our lives. If I, if I don't love Joe, who, who I see, and I say I love God, who I don't see, I'm a liar. I didn't say it, God said it. You know, I didn't even know I went to the school, went to the school in 73 in Violent High School. I didn't even know they said I, uh, there was a man there who was a grand dragon of the Ku Klux Klan. And I didn't even know it. Every time I see, hey, what's up? How you doing? And he respected me, there was no issue, but after I graduated, I found out, wait a minute, he's the Grand Dragon of the KKK. See, because the reason why it didn't affect me none, because my mom and dad didn't teach me that stuff. See, we as parents got to quit teaching our kids, you know, the stuff that's not in the Bible. Thy word, Jesus said, this word is true. Anything else is a lie. My word is true. If it goes against my word, it's a lie. Amen. Parents are starting to stand up in the school, say, I don't like the way y'all teaching my children. Amen. I wish congregation would stand up in the church, church and tell their pastor, I don't like the way you're teaching me. How can you tell me God is God can't do nothing when God said I can do everything? We don't even we don't even believe in healing. Not here. That don't happen no more. We don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit. We don't believe that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that, he has, that we ask or say. We really don't believe that. Why? Because if we did, we would ask him more. When they told us we had to close the church, I got mad. I don't know about y'all, I got mad. They can go get an abortion. They can go to the drugstore, the liquor store, but we couldn't come to church. And you know what bothered me the most? We agree with it. We said, okay, if y'all don't want us to go to church, we'll stay home. Worst thing we did. You know why I know? Because we, the reason why we, we, we stood on and we're waiting for people to come by, and, then, and the people say, why do I need to go to church when I can get it at home? But the Bible said, For, forsake not the, the assembling of yourselves together. Why? Because we need each other. We need each other. We, we need each other to, to, in order to fight this battle. We can't fight it on our own. I'm talking about me. I, I'm, I'm talking about me. I said, Lord, I ain't going to church with no mask on my face. I'm talking about me. I am not going to church with a mask on my face. Why? Because I ain't got to have no mask covered up my face to praise your name. That's me. I'm talking about me. I ain't talking about nobody else. This is about me. So what I did was while we was closed, I went to a church that didn't have to wear no mask. In fact, we didn't even social distance. And I asked the pastor, how did it work? He said, nobody in the building got sick. Why? Because they were covered by the blood. And when you're covered by the blood, nothing can come against you. So I want you to understand and realize I'm speaking on my condition. Not yours. You've got to make a decision for yourself. 
But I wasn't coming in. You know what? I said, Lord, as soon as you open them doors, I'm going to come praising you. I'm going to sing and I'm going to praise you. You know what? I probably will still be at that church if they believe in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> now notice this. A church that don't really believe that God can do all that he said he could do, open up their doors and say, come on in, I'll take your temperature, you all right, sit down. And churches who say, I believe you, God, I believe you, God, I believe you, God, and, and scared to come into church. I have, I have some friends who won't go to church yet, but they go to shop right. They won't go to church yet, but they'll go to work. They won't go to church yet, but they do everything else that they want to do instead of going to church. Now you got to ask yourself the question, why do they not want to go to church? See, when it's Sunday morning, I'm anxious. I'm ready to come. But I've been there. I've been in them churches. <laughs> Do, do I really have to go? I mean, we know what's going to happen. We know we're going to sing two songs, and we know nothing's, nobody's going to get prayed for, nothing's going to happen. So I know what's going to happen during the whole service. I know when to come, and I know when to leave. And, and, and the fact is that when God begins to move, when the Spirit of God begins to move, you may be here for a long time. But we're so anxious to hurry up, get to church. I went to church. Now I'm going to go home and watch football. Now I'm, not praying, I'm, not, I'm not preaching against football. I'm not preaching against anything, to be honest with you. I'm just telling you the truth. Because the Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I don't know about you, but I want to be free. <laughs> so I was sitting there and I was saying, Lord, I want more of you. I want more of you. I want more of you. Singing is good. Preaching is good. All the praise is good. But I want more of you. Because you're going to make the difference in my life. You're going to change my situation. You're going to give me joy. You're going to give me peace. I need more of you. And the Bible says, he that believeth in me, as the scripture says, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And I said, Jesus, where my water? You said I'm supposed to be flowing with rivers of living water. How come I got a sink full? Or a tub full. I'm not flowing in a river. And he says, that's the problem. You're not, but I am. You're so wrapped up in you, you forgot who I am. I didn't say you was the water. I said I was the living water. I didn't say you had to produce the water. I just said you need to abide by the, by the branch. Be, be, you are the branch, I'm the vine. So you just stay hooked on the vine. You will produce the water. See, but I'm trying my best to produce what God wants me to be. Every time I try, I fail. I'm going to pray more. That's what I'm going to tell myself. I'm going to pray more, Lord. I'm going to pray more. I'm going to pray some more. I'm going to pray more than I ever prayed. So, 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 so this next morning, I, the, the, I hear him speaking to me, get up. But I hear the flesh say, stay down. Well, Lord, you know I messed up today. Let me try it tomorrow because I'm tired. You know I'm tired. I don't feel like praying right now. Yeah, no, nobody, nobody experienced that like, but me, I guess. Uh, and then I said, I'm going to begin to pray more. Yeah, I'm going to pray more, John. I'm going to pray more. I'm going to wait till the evening hours. Because in the morning, you know, everything is on your mind. I'm going to wait till the evening hours. And you know what? By the time 10 o'clock comes, I don't forget all about praying more. Because I'm tired by that time. So, so the best thing I finally realized is, you know what? 
When the Spirit of God begin to move you, begin to pray. You don't have to wait till you go to bed. You can, you can pray while you're driving. You can pray while you're on your job. That's why the Bible says, pray without ceasing. Pray all the time. Pray all around the clock. Don't worry about what time a sweet hour of prayer can be any hour. You just got to learn how to do what God's called you to do. I'm going to fast more. Lord, I'm going to fast more until I, I smell that fried chicken joke. <laughs> I, I told him I was going to fast this day, but she had the nerve to fry some chicken. Lord, I, I can't fast today. I got to fast tomorrow. I got to fast tomorrow because that chicken smelling good. You know how that chicken smell goes through all the house? Where am I going to go? Where am I going to go pray and smell of that chicken? See, 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 when we try to do it on our own, it's impossible. That's why when people say God is calling us to a fast, I can't, most of the time I can't call, I can't fast with you because God has not called me. I don't mean to be smart, but when I try to do a fast that somebody else called, I can't do it. It's hard. But when I hear the Spirit of God move me, it's time to fast. I can do it because he's given me the strength to do it. And when you have God's power to do what he called you to do, it becomes easy. See, if God had called me to do it, that chicken wouldn't have meant a thing. If he had called me to do it, that piece of chocolate cake wouldn't have done a thing. But because he didn't, and I said, I want to do it so I can get closer, God said, you can't get no closer. You just got to open your eyes to see that I'm here. You're trying to get my attention. My attention is already on you. I know what you need. I know what you're going through. I know the situations you're facing. Why don't you trust me? But we want to make a deal with God. Oh, man, Joe, these deals are hard. Lord, if you just do it this one time, if you just do it, Whatever it is, whatever it is that you want him to do. Lord, if you just do it, I'd I, I, I be a better whatever. And I failed, 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 failed because I was trying to do it in the flesh. We don't understand the scriptures that says the flesh profited nothing. No thing, nothing at all. The flesh profited nothing. Nothing. That's why he says we got to learn how to kill this flesh. Every day we got to kill this flesh. He said if you walk in the spirit, you shall fulfill the desire of the spirit. But if you walk in the flesh, you're going to do what the flesh does. So you got to decide, am I going to walk in the spirit or am I going to walk in the flesh? One thing I found out, you can't walk in both of them. Some people try. That's why you see them happy. Peace. Who you looking at? Hope. And I'm sick and tired of this. From the same body. Because you're walking in something that you ought not to be walking in. My, 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 a couple of people in my family said, the older you get, the more grouchy you get. John, you ever heard that? <laughs> the, the older you get, the more grouchier you get. It's not that I'm grouchy. I'm just trying to take on everybody else's stuff. And I don't know how to, and I don't know how to put it down because it's not for me to bear it. So, so everybody's stuff is coming at me, and I don't, I don't have enough sense to cast everybody else's stuff with my stuff and put it on him. He said, cast all your cares upon me. Why? Because I care for you. And here I am trying to carry your stuff and my stuff and everybody else's stuff and wondering why I got a quick answer. Don't you see? Leave me alone. See, I know I'm telling the truth because I ain't the only one got these issues. We all came from the same dirt. 
And when you allow things and people and pressures to, to take over your life, you are controlled not by the Holy Spirit. You're controlled by the things and the pressure that has come upon your life. And the more you try to break it, the more you, oh, man. Oh. The Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. And there's six more. I ain't even settled the three yet. Love, if you love me, he said, keep my commandments. He's not telling us to love him to get his love. He's saying, if you love me, do what I say. How many of us do what the Lord say? If we did what the Lord told us to do, we wouldn't be in the situation that we are right now. He said, don't, even, don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. He meant that. And we look at it as a husband and wife, but it's more than that. You can be un, un, hooked on un, un, unbelief with, 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 on your job. You can be unbelief with, 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 with any situation of circumstance that, that controls you. Anything that controls you, you're a slave of. If you can control what, what's trying to control you, then you're an overcomer of that which is trying to control your life. So many times we make decisions based upon how I feel or how I think about the situation. When God is saying, have you prayed about it? Have you asked me what did you want me to do? Have you taken the time and they really, he said, ask and it shall be given. Seek, you shall find. Knock the door, it shall be opened. Have you really started knocking on my door? Or you knock and you pray one time, okay, he didn't answer. That means I can do what I want. No, if you don't get an answer that, to, that, that, that's according to the word of God, let me tell you, the devil can give you an answer, but it's not according to the word of God. If you get an answer that's not according to the word of God, it's not what God is saying. You need to slow down and listen and say, Lord, what are you saying to me? What are you saying to me? See, sometimes we, when we get in this word, we want to think about, we read something and we say, oh, that's for her. Oh, that's for him. Who's reading? Can I ask you a question? Who's reading? Is he reading? Is she reading? Or are you reading? And the Bible says it is a light unto our pathway. It is a mirror. I don't look in this and see John. I look in there and I see Frank. Oh, that's me. That's me with a bad attitude. That's me fearing God, fearing, fearing what's going to happen. That's me. But then he says, the fruit of the Spirit is not only love, but it's joy. Count it all joy. When you fall into divers' testing, how many of you rejoice when you're going through? Oh, thank God, Joe. I lost my job. Thank God. Thank God. I don't have no food in the cat. But that's the but the Bible said. Count it all joy. You know how we count it? Lord, I've been good to you. <laughs> Lord, I've been doing what you called me to do. I've been praying. I've been preaching. I've been sacrificing. I've been doing this, and I've been doing that. And is that counting the joy? No, that's counting the murmuring and complaining. See, I, 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 I just, that's just two of them. Then he says, fruit of the Spirit is peace. Oh, my God. How are you going to have peace in the midst of the storm? How do you expect me to have peace? When all around me, everything is in shambles. I don't expect you to have it. I expect you to walk in my spirit. Because there's not a, never a time that I don't have love. There's never a time that I don't have joy. There's never a time that I don't have peace. There's never a time that I don't have faithfulness. There's never a time that I don't have all those things that you need. I am all those things that you need. And we're going to seek him for more love. No, you just, need to you just need to stay in the vine. 
Stay hooked up with the branch. Love comes from him, not from me. Joy comes from him, not from me. Hope comes from him, not from me. If I try to produce it today, that means I got to do it tomorrow. And that's what's frustrating. Joe, you're happy today? Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And tomorrow something comes up. And the next one says, you got to have long, long suffering. In other words, I'm already going through a cycle of, of, of no peace and no joy and no love. Now I got to have a long suffering, which means it's going to last a long time. But the only thing that's going to get me through this time is the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Because it's the Holy Spirit that's going to cause me to go through those situations, to go through those circumstances, to go through those trials of life, that goes through everything that comes, that goes, come hell or high water, I can still have joy. But if you're like me, I feel like I got to do something. I feel like I got to help God out. I, you know what I'm saying? I feel like I got to, God, you're moving too slow. So maybe if I just get on my knees instead of standing up, maybe if I get on my knees, you know, I'm trying to deal with this man. Maybe if I get on my knees and pray, because you know my knees hurt. So you know it's in agony. You know I'm in pain. You know, you know I'm trying to get your attention. See, that's what they did in the Old Testament. They, they wore they, 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 they sackcloth and ashes because they wanted to get God's attention. We don't have to do all that. But why do we do it? Because we feel like we got to be a part of the plan. We want to be a part of what God is doing when God says, all I want you to do is rest in me. Let me do what you can do. And then let me do what you think you can do. Because without me, you can't do nothing. But with me, you can do all things. So we have to understand and realize that the fruit of the Spirit is long-suffering. And I got to be able to go through the process of being nice while I'm going through long-suffering. Because the next fruit is gentleness. I got to learn how to be nice. I'm mad. I'm mad. But I got to learn. I got to allow the Holy Spirit to work to me to be nice. And then while he's working to me to be nice, he's saying you got to have the fruit of goodness. Not only I got to be nice, I got to be good. I got to help other people while I'm going through long suffering. How y'all getting what I'm saying? Because if you're trying to do it by yourself, if you're trying to make it on your own, it is not going to work. And Jesus realized this and he said in his word, I got to go so that the comforter can come. Because if I don't go, he can't come. If he can't come, you won't be powered. You won't be empowered to do what I called you to do. So I got to go away so that I can send him so that he can walk beside you. So that he can guide you. So that he can teach you. That he can show you the truth. But how much time do we ask, Holy Spirit, show me your way? I remember seeing a book. I ain't going to tell the author's name, but when I say it, Good Morning, Holy Spirit. And when I saw that, Good Morning, Holy Spirit, why ain't he talking to the Holy Spirit? Shouldn't he be talking to God? And I came to realize over the years, that the Holy Spirit is God. God is spirit sitting up in heaven. Jesus is on the right, hand, right side of him. And he said, I'm sending my Holy Spirit to teach you, to guide you, to, to tell you things that are going to come. Now, if he's going to tell me things to come, why am I not listening to what he's saying? You know why? Because I was taught this is only the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, yes, but the Holy Spirit don't move like he used to. You can't hear the voice of God. The only way you can hear God's voice is through this book. No, no, no. He speaks to the prophets. He speaks to, 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 to you if you will listen. What did he say? My sheep 
hear my voice. And another they will not follow. What do you mean your sheep hear your voice? When, 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 what did you say? It's in the book. You ever read this book and read it many times and you find something in there that you haven't seen before? And it's been there all the time. And you just didn't need it at the time. But the Holy Spirit is showing you this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do in order to be where I want you to be. And if we listen to his voice, if we follow his direction, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I would fear no evil. Why? Because the Lord is with me. And if the Lord is with me, there's nothing that I can't withstand. There's nothing that I can't do. There's nothing that he can't do through me if I allow him to work through me. Now, we must understand and realize God speaks to everybody in a different way. That's why I said those of you that wear masks, don't pay no attention to me. Honestly, because God is speaking to you. I heard his voice for me. And my voice, his voice for me, is not his voice for you. See, the reason why we mess up so much, we try to put everybody in the same box. You got you to gotta act like I act. You got to raise your hand. You got to do this. You got to do that. And we're just doing what, what everybody else is telling. What is God telling you to do? What is God telling you to do? Early in the beginning, God told me not to get that vaccine. I'm not saying with you. You know what? So he said, look, I want you to do, go get some hydroxychloroquine. I don't look like a horse, do I? <laughs> they said it's horse pills. But come to find out, the senators and the congressmen and their family are on ivermectin and the and HC, HCQ. They're on it. So why aren't they allowing us to get on it? Their families are on it. But they're telling us it's not safe. They've been around 25, 30 years. This virus, this, this thing they got now, has only been around for one year, two years. See what I'm saying? You got to start listening to God. Listening for God speaking to you. Five years ago, the Lord told me, look, you need to buy some extra stuff just in case. Just in case. So, so I got some extra food. It's supposed to last 25 years. So if I don't need it, it can get passed on. And if somebody in the neighborhood needs something, they can get passed on. But see, if you don't listen to what God is saying to prepare, you won't be ready when the storm comes. Now, am I telling you to do it? No. I'm telling you what God told me. One of the, one of the, one of the, one of the things that me and this brother here, and pastor, they told me God said, "I'm not you. You ain't pastor no more." What? What? I don't want you pastor. You gonna be well? I don't know. I don't know what I'm. I don't know what I'm supposed to be. But I do know. I'm not supposed to pastor another church because God has something else that he wants me to do. But you know how hard that was in my mind to break loose of not being able, I love people. I love ministering to people. I love being in, in, in assembly with people. But, but he said, now you're going to have to stop that. And I fought it. He know I fought it. I fought it. If I don't pastor, what am I going to do? There it goes. I. What am I going to do? The same person that called you to pastor has equipped you for doing something else. You will empower. You will be empowered to do what I equip you for. See, we get hooked up on titles. We get hooked up on positions. Positions and titles don't mean a thing if the Holy Spirit is not backing you up in your position and in your power. Don't mean a thing. 
It don't mean a thing. You can sound good, you can sing good, you can preach good, but if you don't have the power of the Holy Ghost behind you, you're just good. See, we have to understand and realize that God is working something in our lives that only he can produce that the, the, the will to do it and then also the desire to do it. Because when he is working in us, he gives us the will to do what he wants us to do. And not only that, he gives us to the desire to do what he wants to do. Believe it or not, 20 years ago, I said, I don't want to be no pastor. <laughs> I told him, I, no, I don't want to be a pastor. But he gave me the desire and the will. Now when he says, stop. Wait, wait a minute, you're going to take the desire and the will away? Yeah, because I'm going to give you the desire and the will to do what I want you to do now. See, we get stuck in periods of time. God says one day is a thousand years, a thousand years is one day. You don't know what you're going to do tomorrow. God is trying to move in our midst. God is trying to do things, and we want to go back. Well, he didn't do it then. Well, he can do it now. How many things we lose out of? Because we don't trust God. We don't trust him. All right, I have to see my time is coming close. I told him I was going to be obedient. <laughs> see, I said I told him. See, the Holy Spirit didn't tell me to tell him that. <laughs> I told him, Brother John. I told him. I told him I'm going I'm to try to do my best. I even said I'm going to try not to move. I said it. See, but when the Holy Ghost says it, it makes a difference. Let me, let me close with this. For, for, for since I've been preaching, uh, which is probably since 1980, I, I was going around and, and I was going to different churches. I said, God is going to judge. God is going to judge. God is going to He said, get your life in order. In essence, that's what the message was about. Get your life in order. The church needs to wake up. And then you come to this place now when God says, I'm going to give mercy and grace to the church. Because if you look at it, the church is not ready to go anywhere. I know they said that, that Jesus is coming. He is coming and he's looking for a church without spot or wrinkle. Well, let me tell you something. Our church, this, the churches are not ready. They're not ready. We all spotted up and wrinkled. I can't sing my song. I ain't singing. It ain't my time to pray. I ain't praying. It ain't it's all spotty and wrinkled because we want to have our way. But God says, look, in the end, I'm going to have my way. I'm going to have my way. I'm going to do what I said I was going to do. Are you going to trust me? Are you going to trust and believe what I said? Or are you going to continue to do what you want to do? Let, let, me, let me just say this, and then I'm, I'm, I, I, I think about closing. Philippians 2.13 says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So notice, it is God that's working in me, not me trying to produce. And when I understand that God is working in me, it takes the pressure off of me trying to do me. Because me don't do me too well. But if God is doing me, then I'm, I'm going to be what he called me to be. And I'm going to do what he called me to do. He said, I abide in me and I in you as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye ex except ye abide in me. I'm the vine, ye the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Much fruit. Much fruit. So when I'm bringing forth much fruit, those nine fruit of the Spirit ain't nothing. When I rely on him to do it through me and not me trying to convince him that I need it. Because he already know what I need. He, knew, he knows more than I know. And, and he knows my thoughts from afar off. And, and, and if he can read my thoughts from afar off, and he does, Boy, he got, he got some stuff up in there. 
But in spite of my thoughts from afar off, his grace and mercy is extended to me. Even though he know what I thought about five years ago, when I'm thinking about 20 minutes before I got up here, and he still gives me his grace and his mercy. See, when, when, when I think about what he has done, I don't have to worry about what he's going to do because if he did it once, he, he'll do it again. And if, he's, if he answered my prayers before, he can answer my prayer now. But I've got to get out of that habit of trying to, come on, God. You know Abraham and Sarah. Come on, God. Do I got to help you? What a mess that turned out to be. Finally, that's what I said, finally. The Bible says we are the temple, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, we are the temple of the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. For ye have been bought with a price, therefore, Glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are his. Did you hear that? This body don't belong to you. Your will don't belong to you. You gave it over to him. So you have to learn to trust him to lead you in the places where he wants to take you. And you have to walk by faith and not by sight. Because that sight walking to kill you. How many things you say, you, you musicians, y'all can get on up there. Y'all drive me to sit down. <laughs> get on up there. Because it's been a long time, I can stand up here another hour. <laughs> and that ain't no lie. But I'm, I'm concerned consider of your time. But when we learn how to trust God, when he say all things are possible to those that believe, there's nothing, 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 nothing that is impossible for God to do if it's according to his word. God's promised to do what he would do, but only if it's according to what he said he would do. We just can't make empty prayers and without the, 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 the following, the backing of the, Holy, of the Holy Spirit with the Word of God. Because the Word of God is what's true. The Word of God is what's life. The Word of God is what's power. The Word of God is what's going to keep us. But we have to learn, I can't keep myself. So what is the conclusion to the story? You got to do what I did. Help! Can you hear me now? Because I realize, man, Frank, you messed up. Good as I want to be. Good as I think, as good as, good as I think I am. I messed up. Because I want to do what I, I, I don't want nobody to help me. That's my problem. I don't want nobody to help me. I'm supposed to help everybody. I don't want nobody to help me. People, people walking up to me, giving me money, I said, no, thank you, like a fool. It wasn't my money. It was my money to help somebody. But if I don't take it, how am I going to help them? So it's hard for me to, Holy Spirit, you take control. Yo, I like to know where I'm going. <laughs> Holy Spirit, He's going to lead me places I don't want to go. That I think I don't want to go. Because in my mind, I said, I can't do it. But according to his word, I can do it. So if you don't have nothing else in you but to cry out, help, he hears you. When you come to the end of yourself, when you come to the end of, I'm going to try to be better. When you come to the end of, I can do this. And when you come to the end of, I'm going to do it and let God do it. When you come to the end of, I got to make this happen. I got to bring this to pass. 
I got the bread. I got to have love and joy and peace. No, you don't. You got to be connected to the vine. Stay connected to the vine. You'll have love. You'll have joy. You'll have peace. You'll have all those things that you're looking for because the vine is supplying all your nutrients. But once I connect my, disconnect myself from the vine, I wither up and die. If you don't want to wither up and die, stand by the Holy Ghost. Hi, this is Pastor Myers. I pray you enjoyed our broadcast today, and I wanted to let you know that our church family would love to have you join us here in our sanctuary for one of our weekly services. Every Sunday morning, we have dynamic worship, powerful preaching, an awesome children's church, and we see the power of God as he ministers to his family. Our Sunday services begin at 11 a.m. Then on Wednesday nights, we have ministries for the entire family. We have adult worship and Bible study. It's a night packed with the presence and power of God, and that happens at 7.15 every Wednesday night. For more information about New Life Church, you can go to our website at newlifeoutreach.org. There you'll find all the information you need to be part of our great church, and you'll see what God is doing in the lives of our families. Until our family meets your family on our next broadcast, may God richly bless you and yours. It's Christmas time at New Life Church. It's time for family, friends, and celebration. Join us this season for some fun-filled, exciting, and moving experiences. It happens all month long with specials for each member of the family. Here's what's happening at New Life as we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now, here's a preview of our Christmas celebrations. Mom, Mom, New Life Church is having our trim the tree tonight. Can we go? I think we might be able to go. But Mom, all my friends will be there. You know, our friends are going to be there too. We'll go. Let's find our family ornament to hang on the tree. You're invited to join our families and hang your family ornament on our giant tree. It happens, Sunday, December 4th at 6 p.m. New Life Church in Millville, New Jersey, presents The Joy of Christmas, a musical celebration of the birth of Christ. Join us as carolers sing Christmas favorites in our town square. You'll enjoy soloists, choirs, and period actresses and actors. There's two performances, Friday, December 9th at 7 p.m., and Sunday, December 11th at 11 a.m. It's the celebration of the birth of Jesus. It's Christmas Eve, the most holy night of the Christian faith. New life celebrates the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Join us for this special night of worship and communion. It begins at 6 p.m. on December 24th. New life is located on Bluebird Lane, in Millville, New Jersey. Join us for this special night. It's Christmas morning. Breakfast is over. The presents unwrapped. And the Christmas dinner prepared. There's on one thing left to do. It's time to go to church to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christmas morning service begins at 11 a.m. at New Life Church and you're invited. Join our families as we celebrate this wonderful day of the Lord Jesus.